Appreciate your pastor, Brother Thomas. He's been a great inspiration and challenge in my life. Come ahead, ladies. And, uh, you know, God's faithful, folks. Amen. He's good. And I uh, appreciate the work here in Colorado Springs. Amen. You know, it was a blessing coming back after a time and just seeing familiar faces. Amen. You're still going on. Amen. Still holding fast. We're going to make it all the way, folks. Amen. And oh, I tell you, ain't going to be no social distancing over there. <laughs> Amen. Oh, I'm thankful for that blessed hope. Worship the Lord with my family. As they minister unto the Lord in song tonight. Praise God. Well, I'm thankful for the Lord's goodness and his faithfulness and that he's never failed us and he's not going to fail us. And he's going to walk with us through, through every difficulty. And with his help, I'm going to serve him no matter what comes and no matter what goes. And I love him tonight. Hallelujah. I've been walking through this valley and my head's been hanging low. This world has been so long, dreary, dark, and cold. My soul has been so weary from fight after fight. Seems like I can't win for losing and nothing turns out right. But there's one thing for certain, devil, I want you to know. serving Jesus, keep holding to his head, by faith I know the victory is somewhere up ahead, I'll not give up nor turn around, I will not be denied, for the battle belongs to Jesus and the victory is mine, though storm clouds roll around me, devil, I shall not be moved. I'll keep, keep on serving Jesus, Jesus. He'll lead me safely through. Though the enemy will fill me with trouble on every side. I know Jesus will not fail me. In his refuge I will hide. And again I face this mountain and I seem too weak to climb. I'll be an overcomer and I'll just testify. I'm gonna keep on serving Jesus. Keep holding to his hand. By faith I know the victory is somewhere up ahead. I'll not give up nor turn around. I will not be denied. For the battle belongs to Jesus and the victory is mine. Those storm clouds roll around me, devil. I shall not be moved. I'm going to keep on trusting Jesus. He'll lead me safely through. Though the enemy assails me with trouble on every side. Jesus will avail me in his refuge I will hide. When again I face this mountain and I seem too weak to climb, I'll be an overcomer and I'll just testify. I'm gonna keep on serving Jesus, keep holding to his hand. By faith I know the victory is somewhere up ahead. I'll not give up, no turn around, I will not be denied. Amen. The victory is yours. But you know, there's times that we've got to enforce that victory that was won at Calvary. Amen. The devil's a liar. Praise God. Amen. I, uh, I really believe that our visit here with you is providential. And uh, I was talking to Brother Thomas on the phone. He mentioned us coming. We was desiring to come, wanting to be in the revival with the mans. And uh, 
I uh, just started praying, and the Lord gave me direction. And uh, I just really felt like, you know, that uh, it was of the Lord. And I called a man to fill in for a Sunday, and um, it's a brother that has preached for us a number of times. He said, Brother, I'm sorry, I'm preaching a camp meeting in Mississippi, and I, I'm not available. So I asked somebody else, and they said, I'm preaching in Oklahoma, I'm not available. And uh, I just, you know, cried out to the Lord, just seemed like everybody I asked, no one was available to uh, feel that place. And uh, I, just, I just determined, God, I'm not going to go and, and leave a vulnerability here. I know that's not your will, God. And it just looked like it wasn't going to work out. But deep within me, I really felt like it was God's will for us to be here. And, I, you know, in a situation like that, you can just trust Him. Amen. And uh, I got a call. Maybe, I don't know what day it was, this last week. And uh, they canceled the camp meeting in Mississippi. Amen. And the brother said, I'd love to be there. Amen. So God canceled the camp meeting to allow us to be here. Amen. With you. Amen. I want to tell you, I don't believe it's by accident, folks. I believe God wants to talk to you. Amen. I believe there's a group of people here that really, really wants God's will in your life. Amen. I've sensed over the last couple of days being with you. Amen. That you really want God to work. You really want God to work in your life. And I want to tell you, God gets involved, amen, when there is that heart that really wants Him, that wants His will, because He loves you. Amen. And I'm going to read quite a few scriptures tonight. Amen. Turn with us to the book of Exodus, chapter 19. Amen. I want to preach with the help of the Holy Ghost in your prayers tonight on your God's treasure. Amen. You are God's treasure, a peculiar treasure. Amen. You look peculiar, you act peculiar. You are peculiar. You're God's peculiar treasure. He cares for you. Exodus chapter 19. I want to read verse 5 and 6. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Amen. Then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. Amen. You're a privileged people. You know, there's been quite a bit said about privileged. Amen. And this life or that life matters. And all, you know, all men were created equal. But let me tell you something. There's something different about you than the rest of this world. If you're born again here tonight, and I believe there's a group here, amen, a core right here, amen, that's hungry for God and wants to do His will. And you are a chosen, peculiar people above everybody else in all of this world. Amen. Because he chose you and you've sided with him. Would you pray with us tonight? God, help us to hear. Help us, God, to hear, Lord, and to receive what your spirit would say to us and respond to respond to your drawing for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Turn around to somebody and say, I'm peculiar. <laughs> amen. Amen. You are a peculiar treasure. 
Amen. Listen to me, Deuteronomy 14 and 2. He said, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. Deuteronomy 26 and 17. Thou hast avouched the Lord this day to be thy God, and to walk in his ways, and to keep his statutes, and his commandments, and his judgments, and to hearken unto his voice. And the Lord hath avouched thee this day to be his peculiar people as he hath promised thee and that thou should keep all his commandments and to make thee high above all nations which he hath made in praise and in name and in honor and that thou mayest be a holy people unto the Lord thy God as he hath spoken. Amen. You are God's peculiar treasure. He said in the New Testament, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 7, unto you therefore which believe he is precious. But in them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient, whereunto they were also appointed. But ye you're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light which in time past were not a people but are now the people of God amen you are a chosen people a peculiar people amen but now have which had not obtained mercy but now have obtained mercy and then in Titus chapter 2 and verse 11, he said, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. I want to tell you, there's been a redefining of grace in this culture in which we live. Amen. But the true grace of God is the power of God working in you to produce Christ in you. Amen. We're saved by that grace. And that grace teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. He said, these things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. That word peculiar, every one of those scriptures, he said, you are a peculiar people. A holy, you are different than this world. Amen. And you know, we, we think of that word peculiar as being strange or different or odd, but that's not really the biblical definition of that word peculiar. In the Bible, that word peculiar, amen, it means uniquely one's own. Amen. You don't belong to anyone else. You are his special treasure. You belong to him. You are peculiarly his own. Amen. A special people. Amen. A peculiar people. You belong to him. He said in 1 Corinthians 6 and 19, what? No, you're not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you which you have of God and you're not your own but you've been bought with a price therefore glorify God because he be you belong to him amen he loves you he cares for you he purchased you with the blood of his son amen you're peculiar you're uniquely his everybody out there has not sided with him amen but when you made that choice to surrender to him oh I tell you what he took you up. He called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, and holy people. Amen. To show forth the praises of him who had called you out of that darkness into his marvelous light. 
You're different than this world. Don't ever be ashamed. Don't ever be intimidated by this world. Amen. Don't ever be ashamed of him oh, that loves you. Amen. The creator of this universe that stretched the north out over an empty place and hung the world upon nothing. Amen. Tells the number of the stars and calls them all by their names. Amen. Oh, he cares for you. He loves you and he has a great plan for you, an eternal plan for you. He really cares about every detail in your life because you belong to him. He purchased you. You know, the worth of something is determined by what somebody's willing to pay for it. <laughs> Amen. You know, the devil wants you. Amen. Oh, to feel How could God love me? Amen. To feel like you're so unworthy. But I want to tell you something. Your feeling doesn't determine your worth. Amen. God has purchased you. He's God and he's chosen to place his love up on you. He knew you when you were his enemy. He reached for you. He pulled you unto himself. He purchased you, not with corruptible things as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. He purchased you with his own son and he loves you. Amen. He cares for you. He's concerned about every detail in his life. And you belong to him. You're a peculiar treasure unto him. Amen. He knows what's down the road for you, folks. And you can trust him. Amen. By the Bible, I can show you what God's will is for your life. Amen. God. Amen. The preacher talked last night about God having a plan. Amen. He's got a plan. I mean, I ultimately I can show you by the scripture what that plan is. Amen. In the book of Romans, chapter 8. Amen. The Bible says, likewise, the Spirit, verse 26, likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. How many of you want God's will in your life? Amen. I think that's 100%. You want the will of God. Amen. Well, did you know God's out to change you? Amen. He loves you. He's not going to leave you. Amen. Oh, like you are. He loves you. He's, He's molding you. He's making you. Amen. He cares for you. He loves you. And he's making intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And the Bible says we know that all things work together for good to those that love of God to them who are the called according to his purpose. What is that purpose? He tells us in that very next verse what the will of God is for your life. Amen. He said for whom he did verse 29, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that Jesus would be the firstborn among many brethren. The will of God for your life is that you're conformed to the image of Christ. Amen. The Christ is conformed in you. And I want to tell you something. He's different than we are, folks. In that little book, The School of Christ by T. Austin Sparks, David Wilkerson said that book had a greater impact upon his life, amen, outside of the Bible than any other book he had read. And the very first chapter of that book zeroes in, amen, upon that reality that Christ is utterly different than we are. Worlds are different, but he's conforming you to that image. Amen. It's not, he's not making a better you. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you. Amen. He's crucifying you. Slaying that flesh. Creating a brand new you. Amen. That's in the image of his son. Amen. Different than we are. Amen. Other than we are. 
but by the power of the Holy Ghost, he's working that in your life, a peculiar treasure, amen, unto himself. Oh, hallelujah, God, make that a reality to us, amen. He said that you might be the first, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren, amen, for whom he did predestinate them he also called, and whom he called them he also justified, and whom he justified them he also glorified. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? I want to tell you this world is against you. The devil is against you. The flesh is against you. But God is for you. And greater is he that is in us than he that's in this world. Greater is he than the system of this world. Greater is he than any political system. Greater is he than any economic system. Greater is he, amen, than any coronavirus. Amen. God is in control and you belong amen to the God of heaven and he's chosen you as a peculiar treasure you don't belong to this world you belong to him and he's got eternal plans for you amen you're hid with Christ in God and when Christ who is our life shall appear then we're going to appear with him in glory as long as you stay in Christ, you're as eternal as God is. You're an eternal treasure unto him. Amen. God's working in your life. But sometimes we don't see it as God working. But he said all things are working together for good. Joseph didn't really see, amen, how it was God in the natural. But you know, as he grew and matured, even though in the book of Psalms, the Bible says his feet, they hurt with fetters. And Joseph was laid in iron. And until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. And I want to tell you, the devil was at work back then just like it is today. And I can tell you there was a thousand devils telling him that God has forgot him. Amen. And he's going to die and never see his family. And those, those visions and dreams that he had would never come to pass. Amen. But oh, I tell you, he went to sleep one night as a prisoner. And he woke up the next morning. Amen. And became the most power from man in all the world. Amen. Under Pharaoh. Amen. Nothing is impossible with God, folks. Amen. You can trust him. He's in control. And he's working things together as you respond to him, forging you into a vessel, conforming you to the image of his son. Amen. But if that work is going to be accomplished, we've got to be in his hands. We've got to remain pliable. We can't let the deception of the devil or the flesh rise up and say, it's enough. I'm done. I'm too. Just stay in his hands. Be available to him. Brother Gary read last night out of Jeremiah chapter 18. Amen. About that potter. Amen. Being on that potter's wheel. Being in the hands of the potter. That he, he, can, he can make you again another vessel that seemed good to the potter to make it. Amen. Did you know I believe the local church is like that potter's wheel. Amen. The devil don't like God's people coming together. God commanded in Hebrews chapter 10 to not forsake the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is and so much the more as we see the day approaching. You know what the next verse says? For if we sin willfully, that word for means because. Come together because if we sin willfully, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful looking for a judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. There's a devil out there, amen, that wants to separate you from the Spirit of God and the people of God and the authority that God has established in your life. The devil wants to separate you from that accountability, amen, and get you off out there by yourself and devour you. Amen. There's protection 
on the potter's wheel. There's protection in that place where God has placed you. I want to tell you, amen, if this is your local body, then it's vital that you be here. Amen. What happens if you got up in the morning and your right leg decided to stay in bed? I want to tell you, it'd be awful hard for you to function. Amen. And oh, when that body that God has fitted together and he's made every part, you may feel insignificant. You may not feel like your part's very important. Well, my liver may feel that way. You can't see my liver. It doesn't get much glory. Amen. But it's very needful. Amen. You can't see my heart, but it's very needful. Amen. Uh, you know, if the eye, amen, decided, well, I, you know, uh, I want to be a hand. Amen. You know that hand, it's always out there able to do stuff. Amen. I don't get to do very much. I, I, I want to be a hand. It, it wouldn't work very good, folks. Amen. And that hand stumbles around. Amen. If it takes the place of those eyes and says, eyes, I want to be the eyes now. Amen. I tell you what, you're going to be stumbling over some things. Amen. God has placed every part of that body as it has pleased him. Amen. And you've got a place in this body. And if you will make yourself available and pliable, God will use you and God will work in your life. And when he makes up his jewels in that day, amen, you'll belong to him and for eternity, amen. Oh, you'll have that special place. God has a plan for you. You're his peculiar treasure, amen. But oh, how the flesh doesn't like change. <laughs> I want to tell you, we're living in an hour where discipline, correction, reproof is a galling thing, and the flesh don't like it. But I want to tell you, folks, if we're going to grow, we've got to have it. Amen. We will either be the offended or the unoffendable. And I want to tell you, if you're going to grow, you've got to rise up and refuse to be offended and desire for God to work in your life. You're his peculiar treasure. You know, my wife raises dogs. And we sell standard poodles. But every once in a while, there's a poodle that's born that she decides she don't want to get rid of it. She don't want to sell it. Amen. This one's her pick. She's going to keep it. And that one gets different treatment than all the rest. I mean, she takes it to the vet to get its hips checked and its eyes checked and its elbows checked. And all kinds of different genetic things, you know, she gets tested because she's got plans for it. I mean, there's all kinds of things. Spends a lot of money. I mean, forget all that. Just sell the dog. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going that way. I don't want to sell something. I don't want my name. This, this dog is representing Wolf Island Poodles. And I don't want no genetic default out there with my name on it. I'm going to tell you something. Pastor said it earlier. You're his ambassador. You've got his name on you. Yeah. Amen. And he's not going to finish with you until that day that you awaken his likeness. And faith becomes sight. Amen. And this corruptible puts on incorruption. Amen. And it's like your pastor said many times, it's not where you're at as much as which way you're going. Amen. If you'll stay in that path where you're pliable, then one day it's going to be a finished work. Amen. But I don't care how long we're in the way. I don't care how mature we get. It's not going to be finished until that day. We must continue to have an attitude 
food and a hunger and a desire to go farther and a desire for God to work in our lives and a willingness for him to change us because it's that attitude that is your perfection. Amen. As you humbly come before God and say, God, whatever it is, change me, mold me. I belong to you. Amen. Then in the sight of God, you're a finished product. But if there's any area of your life you're not willing for God to put his finger on, amen, then there's a problem. And you're resisting the grace of God. And that's dangerous, folks. He loves you. He wants you to make it. And if you'll stay humble before him and you'll stay pliable to him and you will love correction and you will love reproof, amen, then, oh, I want to tell you, he will do a great work in your life. He said all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. There is an anointing that God places, amen, upon those whom he has called to stand before the flock. He's commanded them that they are going to give an account of that flock. He's commanded them to preach the word, to be instant in season and out of season, to reprove and rebuke and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For he said there's coming a time when they're not going to want to hear it. They're not going to endure sound doctrine. They won't want you to tell them the truth. Did you know sometimes the truth hurts, folks? I mean, God's out to change us. Amen, God, amen, is out to mold us and conform us to the image of his son. And if we will desire that, then it's good, folks. And there's a fellowship, amen, that this world knows nothing about. We are complete in him. There's a joy that comes from yielding our will to him, amen, from surrendering our all and wanting it his way no matter what it is. Oh, that God would help each one of us to embrace the wisdom tonight and choose to love instruction. You're a peculiar treasure. God's going to be working in your life. Amen. I believe God wants you to hear this. He's going to be working in your life. He's not going to leave you where you're at. Amen. And I don't believe any of us Amen. Have arrived yet. Amen. Amen. We're all a work. Amen. In his hands. Oh, that he's wanting to mold. Amen. According to his plan. In the book of Proverbs chapter 15, the Bible says, The ear that heareth reproof of life abideth among the wise. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. But he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is humility. We're living in a time where church discipline and proper correction and instruction and reproof is a rare thing. And this system is pressed in upon it until people don't want that. The flesh does not want that. But we're not of the flesh. Amen. He said if we live after the flesh, we're going to die. But if we, through the Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, we'll live. How many of you, your children just love correction? I mean, they just love for you to get on to them. (laughs) They just love a spanking. Well, you know, the flesh don't like it. Amen. But would it change your home if those youth, if those children just delighted, listen to me, if those children just delighted in instruction. 
I mean, when you corrected them, you instructed them, you reproved them, I mean, you just saw it on their face. They just loved it, and they desired it, and they wanted you to tell them. They wanted to grow. They knew that you knew best, and whatever it is, whether it's cleaning the room or taking out the trash or never talking like that again or never having that attitude again, they were just so grateful. Oh, Mama, thank you so much. Oh, I want that. If you ever see that in my life, please tell me. Oh, thank you, Daddy, for spanking me and helping me to do right. I don't ever, ever want to go that way. What a change. Wow. Hey Amen. Well, you know what? God's children can be that way. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. Because we know better. We know better. He's told us the reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Amen. But he that refuseth reproof erreth. He said, rebuke a wise man, and he'll be he will love thee. Give instruction to a wise man, he'll be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he'll increase in learning. In Psalms 119 and 165, he said, Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. You're a peculiar treasure. God don't want to leave you where you're at. And the local church is that potter's wheel. And God works through authority. That's why in the book of Hebrews chapter 13, he said twice, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves for they watch for your souls as they that must give account. Another place he said, obey them and whose faith follow considering the end of their behavior. The local church is like a crucible. You know what a crucible is? A crucible is that vessel that a valuable metal is heated to a melting point in that crucible. There's fire and there's heat there, amen, until it comes to a place to where the impurities that are in there can be taken out. And the local church is God's crucible where God works in our life to, to search out, to, to boil out, to work out those things that are not of Christ and to expose them and bring them to the surface and then be dealt with in our lives. But God can only do that in a willing vessel. You know, Jesus told his disciples, I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. I want to tell you, folks, time's running out. We need to go on. Hey Amen. There's a time when we've got to go on under perfection. And you know the way that we do that? To love reproof. God's placed men of God here that he wants to work through. And I'm going to venture to say tonight that there's things that your pastors could say to you if they knew that you could receive it. if they knew you could bear it. Some things that would help you. Some things that would make a difference in your life. You know, when you go to a doctor, you want him to tell you the truth. Hey Amen. If, if you got a situation and, I mean, you don't know what it is, you know there's a need and, and uh, you, you go to him, then you may say, doctor, shoot straight with me. I, 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 I will just, you know, don't beat around the bush. Tell me the truth. You want to know what's wrong. You don't want to go in there, amen, and have cancer and him pat you on the back and say, oh, just go have a good time with your family. And, uh, and you know, you're going to be all right. It's all right. Just, just, just enjoy life. Enjoy your family. Knowing that in six months you're going to be dead if something ain't dealt with. What kind of doctor would that be? Amen. I want to tell you, we're living in a time. 
with those standing behind a sacred desk or patting people on the back. Amen. Saying, amen, just, amen, to have your best life now. Just enjoy yourself. Oh, it's, it's going to be all right. You're going to, I want to tell you, I want God to deal with me if there's anything that needs to be corrected, if there's anything that needs to be worked on. I want to know it now. I don't want to find out when it's too late. One day it's going to be too late. And there's going to be a many that are ashamed before him and his coming. Amen. But the Clendenin said he had a dream of hell. And he said he saw this lake of fire. And he said there was a man running through that lake. And he'd reach down in the fire and pull up somebody out of the fire and look at him in the face and thrust them back down and run on a little bit and pull somebody out and look at him and thrust them back down. And uh, he asked the angel, who is that? What is he doing? And the angel told him he's looking for the preacher that lied to him. Amen. Folks, this is a serious thing. Our eternal souls are at stake. Amen. God cares about every detail of your life. It's important to you. Little bitty decisions make major consequences in your life. And God cares about you. And you're his peculiar treasure. And God has chosen you to be here for his glory. Amen. To accomplish his purpose. And he's chosen men. I want to tell you, those men couldn't just go anywhere they wanted to go. Amen. They couldn't just do whatever they wanted to do. They're where God has planted them. Because God wants to talk to you. God wants to deal with you. You're a peculiar treasure unto Him. And this is the atmosphere in which God is working in your life. Somebody would come to the piano. Are you available to the potter tonight? Are you willing for God to change you? Your attitudes, pursuits, ideas, Little seeds are planted, but if we're not careful, sometimes it's hard for us to see. You know, when God was seeking to restore Israel, and he spoke to Ezekiel, Brother Jeff talked about Ezekiel tonight. Amen. God told Ezekiel, I want you to show the house to the house of Israel. He was, he was seeking to restore them to a pattern that he had ordained for them that they had forsaken. And he said, I want you to show the house to the house of Israel. That house that he was to show them was Christ. He said, and when you show it to them, if, if they're ashamed of their iniquities, if, if they're willing to acknowledge and see and be ashamed then I want you to show them all the details. I want you to show them, amen, the going out thereof and the coming in thereof and all the forms thereof and all the statutes thereof. I want you to show it to them if they're ashamed, if there's humility there, if they really want to know, I want you to show it to them. But you know what? If they weren't willing, if they weren't ashamed, of what they, what, what they were shown. If they weren't willing to accept what they were shown, then he couldn't go any farther. He had to stop right there. Are there areas that God's trying to reach in your life? But when a little bit is shown, then the flesh rises up and begins to justify and make excuses and takes up a little bit of offense and God has to step back and say, maybe another time. Maybe, maybe sometime in the future. Folks, we don't have time for that. We're running out of time. 
Now is the accepted time. I want to challenge you. In these altars tonight. To make a decision. To make sure you're on that potter's wheel. And to climb into that crucible. And say God change me. Conform me to the image of your son. Search me God. Show me God. God if my attitude is not pleasing to you. Show me God. God if the way that I. If the way that I speak to my children is not pleasing, show me, God. God, if the way that I, I respond to my husband is not pleasing, show me, help me to see, God. Change me. If my attitude's toward my wife is not, show me, God. Help me, conform me, change me, God. And realize God works through authority. You ought to go to your pastor's. And tell them, I want to tell you, did you know your spirit's far more important than your body? You wouldn't go to a doctor that's not going to tell you the truth. It's a waste of money. A waste of your time. And if there's really a need, you may not have time. He wouldn't be worth going to. I want to tell you, a spiritual doctor that under physician that God works through to deal in your life, to hear from heaven, to speak to you, to speak into your life. You ought to go to them sometime. Pray about it. Get thoroughly right. and want God to change you. Be willing to hear and know I'm not going to be offended. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to let my flesh rise up. I'm not going to receive. I want help. I need you, God. You ought to go to your pastors and say, if there's anything in my life that you can help me with, I want you to tell me. I want you to tell me. I want to grow. Do you see anything that may hinder me down the road? Do you see anything in my life? Oh, that the Lord would want me to go farther, please. Tell me. God will talk to you. If you'll have that heart, you're his peculiar treasure. And I want to tell you, God can come down. Amen. Upon that heart. For you see, that heart is a living sacrifice. In Romans chapter 12, he said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Listen now. He said, be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind so that ye may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I want to tell you, and I'm, I'm closing. There's a spirit of deception out there and none of us are above it. And if we're going to escape, amen, that spirit of deception that's pressing in upon God's people and upon the church, we're going to have to be that living sacrifice. We're going to have to be willing for God to mold us and change us and show us and teach us. It's dangerous to resist that. Amen. Would you stand with us tonight? God, I thank you for this people. Oh, God, I've recognized that there's a heart to know you and to love you. To be available to you, God, for you to do all that you want to with them. Show yourself strong. To be pliable in your hands. Give them grace, God, tonight here to make decisions. To receive the truth that will make them free. And desire it. Love it. And with joy. 
draw water. Amen. Out of those wells. Could we find a place tonight to just make sure that you're on that potter's wheel? Oh, to search your own heart. Am I willing to hear? Do I really want to know? Are there things that I that I don't even go and ask because I really know what they're going to say and I'm not sure I'm ready for it. Folks, we got to get ready. Time is running out. God's wrapping this thing up. The trumpet's going to sound. God's looking for a people that's available and willing and hungry, desirous for Him to change them or to conform them to the image of His Son. Whatever the cost. God, I want to represent you rightly. I want to be light in this dark world. I want to be salt. Show me, teach me, help me, guide me in your word, God. Oh, God, oh, God. Thank you, God, for a preacher that will tell me the truth. Thank you, God. Oh, for a man of God that you've placed over us. Oh, that we can follow. God, if the preacher wouldn't go there, I don't want to go there. If he wouldn't do it, I don't want to do it. Teach me, show me, help me. God, give me a heart that loves correction and instruction and reproof and sees that it's life. Oh, God, make it a reality. My God, my God.